Well, hello there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today's card is called Jump for Joy. It's got a stamp set and two die sets. And the die sets, you can choose one or the other. I got both of them because I can see a use for both of them. And both of them have the same arc for the, the tree. So just know you're going to get a duplicate there. But you have different leaves in each set. And if you want, if you get both sets, you get all four different shapes of leaves. And that was one of the things that I wanted to have all of them for, so I could use them in different ways. I'm taking my washi tape and taping one of the arcs on top of the one that's already die cut. I'm going to show you the vertical one, but I did do a card with the horizontal as well to show you that. And I'm taping it down with the washi tape kind of not as sticky since I rubbed it on my fingers so that it's not going to wreck the surface of my Nina cardstock. And then I'm going to pull out just those pieces that I want to die cut it from. If I went right through the whole thing, I would chop right through the tree and I didn't want to do that. But you can see those pieces now are going to fit right back into the, the whole scene and make one flat piece for my background. I've pulled it all apart and I'm going to apply different distress inks to it. And the distress inks are applied using the round ink blender tool. And I'm just taking a couple of different browns and mixing them on here. It doesn't really matter what colors you use. You can do this in a spring kind of theme. You can do it in a fall kind of theme. I'm doing it as a fall card since that's the season in which this video is being made. But you could do a winter scene. You could do a spring one. You could do summer. These background dyes have a year round use. So if you were to pick up one, you would be able to use it all year long for a lot of different kinds of cards. I am going to ink around the edges of this frame, but I am going to cut it off later. So you can decide whether or not you're going to chop it off or not, depending on what kind of look you want on your card. Now, these are the inside pieces for the tree, and I'm just going to tap some ink onto them to, to cover up the, each one of those shapes. And then I'm going to do the same thing to do the sky portion in those large sections. The surface that I'm working on, by the way, the black shiny metal thing is called a craft assistant. And I love to use that when I'm doing inking things. It's so easy to clean up. It's just an easy wipe down and it stays really flat. It doesn't get crinkled and stuff like other craft mats that I've used. So I will have links to that and all of the supplies for this card in the doobly doo and over on the blog as always. So I'm creating a couple of colors to bring a little bit of transition through it. I ended up by the time I was done not seeing much transition because I just kept applying ink because I was having so much fun doing it. And at the bottom, I wanted to put some green. And as I was putting the ink on and working on blending it in, I realized, you know, that would be kind of interesting to make it look like bushes. I was going to start with some swirly bushes and I have a little bit of blending going on. And I thought, what if I really load up the mini ink blending tool and just make some circles that will actually act as little bushes. And I really liked how that was looking. So I just load up between each one of the applications of it, make them at different heights, and just make sure you do it across to the other side so that it also translates onto that little piece on the other side of the tree. Next, I took all those leaves that I die cut, and this is one set of each of those dies. So you could do multiples of them to have a lot of one particular leaf. And I'm just tapping on a bunch of different colors onto them, but they're adhered onto a sheet of scratch paper. I just put some adhesive down to put them all in place so they wouldn't walk around on me. So it's kind of fun to be able to just keep tapping on different colors to make them look like fall colors. Again, you could do a bunch of greens if you're doing a spring card and be able to use this same technique for another time of year. Also note that you get one set of leaves with one die set and one set of leaves with the other. The reason I have both of them is because of course I bought both die sets. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to make sure I had all those leaf options when I start making cards. Now to adhere all this together, I took a piece of thin card, card stock for my base and I put Be Creative tape all over it. You can do different adhesives, just make sure there's plenty on there and then it's super sticky. This stuff is so sticky that once you put it down, you can't peel it back up. And that's one of the reasons that I like to use it. But I put the frame down and then it's really easy to pop all the other pieces in. Just don't do any pressing until you're sure you have it in the right spot. But once it's down, this is gonna be a very, very flat background for the card. 
practically looking like it's all one piece, even though it's all pieced together and glued inside each other. So here is the top of the tree with all of its little bits and pieces going in. It's just like a puzzle. I used to love puzzles when I was a kid, so this satisfies my inner child to do this kind of thing. And next up, I'm gonna start doing some Copic coloring from the Jump for Joy set. This one has a couple little creatures in it. It has this little pile of leaves. And I'm coloring two of them because I'm making two cards. I'm making the horizontal and the vertical. And I actually ended up only using the stamp here in the vertical one, but you'll see the horizontal card at the end of the video. And I'm just applying some random colors to it, Copic colors. You can do this in whatever colors are appropriate for the scene. I'm just using some yellows and oranges and mushing color over top of them and getting some soft blends going little by little. And then I'll throw in a little bit of green, very pale green so that I don't get a whole lot of color, but there's just a little bit of a difference there. And this is a super easy way to do it. If you're going to be die cutting it, of course you want to leave white around the outside edges, but I'm going to fussy cut these. So I'm not really concerned about coloring right up to those edges or anything. So I'll add some colors that are basically some of the same colors that I used in the leaves for the little fox that I stamped and I masked him out. I first stamped the leaves and then cut out a mask so I could put the fox behind because the little hedgehog is going to be the one jumping and the little fox will already be on the ground. So I'm going to use the same colors to blend him out. But of course if you would like to color him and the whole scene, any of these elements, in whatever medium you'd like, the technique for all of that inlaying and everything will still work. This is just elements that are going to go on top of that background. So I'm just throwing some more colors in here to soften out some of those edges. I have the rakes that I'm going to stamp onto the background, but I'm just going to use the handles to glue on top. And that way I don't have to fussy cut around the tines of the rake, and I still have the impact of color on the handle. Here's my little hedgies that I'm just going to throw some color in. And you can make the coloring really simple. Don't worry about doing shading if you aren't good at shading, that sort of thing. Some simple coloring on this sort of a card when you've got lots of elements, there's an interactive element, there's all the inlaid die work. Don't worry if you're not an amazing colorist and you just want to make these much simpler. A lot of times I remind everybody who watches my videos to focus on the thing that's important. If the interactive portion is the part that's the coolest on the card, then you can let some of the other parts go because people are going to be so amazed by the interactive element that they won't really care if there's perfect shading or if you've chosen a light source or any of that kind of thing on your card. But if you do want to learn more about coloring, I do have a Copic Jumpstart class on my website and you can take that to learn more about coloring. Now this is a slider die set from Lunfawn that I also love. It's got a lot of different shapes so you can make things slide and stuff all over your cards in different directions. I'm going to take this kind of wiggly one and die cut it out of the piece and the, the background piece that I already created. And I'm also going to go around the edges of it with a brown ink just to get rid of some of that white edge. And you can see I've already stamped that rake on there. So now I can add on the little teeny tiny handle for the rake and my little hedgehog is going to be the one sliding down. And at the bottom, I'm going to place my little fussy cut leaves with the little fox. This is going to cover up the messy end down there at the bottom. Since I was die cutting that slider through so many layers of paper and adhesive, I did have to use a craft knife to get some of the parts to cut all the way through. But now with some adhesive, I'm adding dimes onto the back of the, the little hedgy and on the back of the card, and then I have a piece of dimensional adhesive that's smaller than that slider piece so that it will slide through. And then he will make his way down from the tree into his little pile of leaves. In order to make this work on the card, the background piece has to be up off the surface of the card base. So I put some dimensional adhesive on it to lift it up to give the dimes some area to slide down. Some people use pennies, I use dimes just because they're thinner. So here he goes, tumbling down from the top of his card. This is a great idea to give a card to a kid. You could do it for a birthday or just a hello card or happy Thanksgiving or Halloween card. Lots of fun. 
So here's the one with the vertical leafy background dye. So it looks really cute, came out really nice, and he tumbles from high up, and then there you see a cute little foxy friend that he's going down to visit when he makes his big jump. Now, if you wanted to try the same thing with the horizontal one, you can do a whole different look for it. I didn't use the fox on this one. I decided to just use the leaves and I glued them onto the card using some dimensional adhesive for some of them and some of them flat down on the card. And I stamped the sentiment and split it so that jump is on one side and for joy is on the other. But my hedgie still will spin down the card. And I really, really enjoyed making these. They were lots of fun. It is just a lot of work, but for somebody really special, it's worth every minute of it. So here's a couple more videos for you, interactive ones. If you're interested in seeing some more of that, you can hit the subscribe button if you would like to, and you'll get more videos from me. Make sure you click on the option to have them emailed to you so you don't miss any. And I will see you guys next time. I have a video up here on YouTube, which is about three times a week. So. It's not more than just a few days away. Thanks so much and have an awesome day. Bye-bye.